1947, independent India took its first breath of free air. In the 50 years that have followed, air pollution levels have risen so much that clean and fresh air no longer seems a birthright. Pollutants like carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen, lead emissions, sulfur dioxide, suspended particulate matter and hydrocarbons jostle for their share of our breath. As people, industries and vehicles grow in number, our cities become more polluted each day. The poison shadow over our cities is caused mainly by vehicular and industrial pollution. In the last 30 years, the number of registered factories has gone up by 700%. Thermal power plants, fertilizer plants, oil refineries, rubber, chemical and plastic processing industries flourish right in the heart of the municipal limits of our cities and our urban citizens are paying the price for this progress. But more than industrial pollution, it is the stupendous growth of vehicles which is alarming. Forty years back, there were less than a million. Today, there are 27 million vehicles on the road. And by the year 2000, this will go up to 78 million. With vehicle population multiplying like this, we will have 835 million vehicles by 2025. And as each car emits 600 kilograms of pollutants a year, and every two-wheeler 175 kilograms, the combined emission is enough to make urban life in India dangerous. Many of our large towns and cities have pollution levels in excess of the safety standards. At some traffic points, the carbon monoxide level is 50 times higher than the WHO standard. Parts of Calcutta, Ahmedabad, Delhi and Gajraula have high levels of sulfur dioxide. Similarly, in some parts of Calcutta, Delhi, Alwar and Kota, the nitrogen oxide levels are higher than safety standards. Most of our cities have very high levels of suspended particulate matter. Surat, Gajraula, Dehradun, Lucknow, Alwar and Kanpur have concentrations three to four times the safe levels. As the air we breathe in gets more and more poisoned, the effects are visible in deteriorating health. A recent World Bank report estimates 40,000 deaths each year just due to polluted air. The health costs are put at a whopping 1,800 crores. One out of every three in Delhi and Calcutta needs hospital care due to air pollution. Acute respiratory problems like asthma and bronchial infections, heart disease, cancer and eye infections are often attributed to air pollution. Obviously, just living in a big city is enough to damage one's health for life. The more hopeful side of the story is that measures to control urban air pollution are being taken, the most significant being the setting of new emission standards for vehicles and introducing new technologies like catalytic converters and unleaded petrol. Tougher laws are also expected to come into force in the next three to four years. But the bad news is that it may be too late by then. Motorcycles and scooters make a significant contribution to the total air pollution in the metros. And at this very moment, two-thirds of the vehicles on Indian roads are two-wheelers. Most of them still use obsolete technology like two-stroke engines with inefficient systems of combustion. Who is responsible for this situation and what can be done by us? Since it is a lack of reliable bus or train services that forces commuters to go in for private vehicles, investments in better public transport will have a direct bearing on the pollution levels and consequently the health of the citizens. Older vehicles also need to be phased out. At the same time, manufacturers of vehicles must upgrade their technology and clean up the smog they have helped to create for years. The fact that this will push up the prices of the vehicles is no longer an excuse. It is time that those who pollute fresh air pay to make it harmless once again. Green India 2047
a project which looks back to think ahead.